if we can talk about another, uh, obviously, a hot topic within the mining industry, and that is GIS, and explore yeah. that a little bit mm. more. Maybe it's a good start just to remind us of what the fundamental benefits are of GIS for the mining industry specifically, and, and maybe if those benefits are actually changing and evolving as yeah. we progress with our relationship with GIS. Yeah, okay. Um, I think it's important to, to, to distinguish what part of the mining industry we're talking about. I think where GIS has had a massive impact is in on the exploration side. Um, on the mining side, perhaps less so. On you know, once you've got a mine and it's developing, perhaps less so. But but the big impact that GIS has had, there's no doubt at all, has been has been on the exploration side because it exploration mm. by definition, uh, you know, you're bringing t you're wanting to look at how very lots of different spatially related data sets interact with each other. So you may have geochemical data, you may have geophysical data, you may have geological map data, you may have other data, to topographic data, and what the GIS allows you to do is to bring that together, mm. and uh, that has revolutionised the way that that that, um, that exploration companies work now, and they're able to do a lot more, shall we say, at the desktop than they were in the past, mm. and, and you can do it a lot more quickly and a lot more cheaply. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned earlier about sort of geovisionary software, etc., and, mm. and remote virtual working there. So, yeah, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? There's GIS, and then uh, there's there's some software that BGS has helped to develop called Geovisionary, which is yeah. takes uh, terrain data. It's a bit like Google Earth, really, in that yeah. it takes terrain data, and then you can drape over that all sorts of other data as well. Mm. And in effect, you can do a sort of virtual field reconnaissance. Uh, but the, the, the key difference, obviously, between Geovisionary and Google Earth is you can go underground as well. Okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and partnerships are important, you think, in, in some software? Yeah, I mean, we've partnered with a, with a commercial company on to do that. But okay. uh, 3D visualization is, 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 is an area where we've done a lot of work over the last 10 yeah. or 15 years. And, yeah. and I think we're one of the pioneering geological surveys in the world in doing that type of work. Yeah. And surrounding GIS, if we can talk about technology uh, again, I mean, obviously GIS as a technology is evolving as mm -hmm. well, and, and mining, as we alluded to yeah. earlier, is, is evol evolving as an industry. So what do you think are some of the key peripheral technology advancements going on in GIS? Or I think, again, it's not my topic area, but the, okay. I, I think in terms of exploration, um, I think the way GIS is moving is, is a way for, well, it, it will continue doing this, but but it'll move from uh, just layering one set of data on top of another and looking looking at uh, and, and 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 sort of manually, if you like, the, the operator looking at patterns yeah. to where's to methodologies like prospectivity analysis, where you actually get the computer to do this looking for patterns and looking for trends in within the data so looking for lineaments and looking for areas that are more prospective than others and there's some quite clever packages around now which do that and if if that's that's an area i think where there is still a lot to do and, and there's still there's, there's still potential particularly for exploration companies to take those mm. technologies up i understand that, that one of the problems with i mean there are a couple of problems with take up of that one is it's quite technical stuff some of it and I think the other is a kind of mistrust of the technology and the fact that it's a bit black box. You know, you feed a lot of spatial data in at one end and you get you get a you get a derived map out at the other end and you're not quite sure how you got from one to the other. So there's a way to go on these things, I think. Yeah. Obviously a lot of you know, GIS is, is prolific in the industry. A lot of people have actually mm. invested in GIS, mm. obviously. So it's it's less about building the case for GIS. But do you think that mining companies and exploration companies may have uh, currently underutilized its true value. I think I think from what I understand in exploration that there there are there are definite possibilities to to, to do more with with GIS than than are being done at the moment. Yeah. And do you think that as you said that's just because it's conceptual or do you think it's a training issue going on in companies? I think I think there's a whole bunch of issues, you okay. know, that to do with costs and to do with training and, and expertise and 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 and, I, and and developing packages which are suitable for particular types of minerals and, and things like that so there's yeah. a whole there's a whole range of issues i think things are moving yeah. my understanding is things are moving quite quickly but but that i think you know if if there was a gap that's the gap i think you know that, that, that there's more to do there's a lot of exploration activity going on in the world there's that's a lot right. of potential there for for using gis to help that 
Yeah, absolutely. It was because a lot of companies are maybe using it just as a as a simple mapping tool, but it can be used well, as you alluded to earlier, with you know proper predictive. The, I mean, the the real power in GIS is the analysis that you can do. Yeah. So it's it's doing that analysis to help to to identify targets. So your your colleague uh, Julian is actually speaking at uh, our, our upcoming GIS yes. for mining event and one of the things that he's talking about there um, is about having increased team working and uh, increased efficiency in actual field operations. Mm. So um, do you have any thoughts specifically on how that can be done? Again it's not my area but but okay. uh, I, I, my understanding is uh, you know particularly working with something like Geovisionary where you're looking at uh, a an area of ground within a 3D you, within a 3D environment so you're you're sitting in a room or standing in a room yeah. with a, with a 3D system operating, and you can stand there with colleagues and discuss, you know, is this target orientated in this direction or that direction? Is this particular suite of rocks orientated in this direction or that? Direction? Yeah. What's what's the copper content here? Uh, and 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 also you can change, you know, you can model that. You can move things around to enable you to to enable you to stand with colleagues and visualize things rather than perhaps being out in the field on your own, you know, uh, you can you can do this in discussion. Yeah, yeah. 4D, is that? Well, 4D's coming, you know, looking at time as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, 4D models are being used in things like the groundwater industry now, the oil industry. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'll come in mining as well. Yeah. Is it because it, obviously GIS is used in uh, many different industry sectors? Is there is 4D one of the th key things that can be transplanted from other industries over to mining, or is there any other? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again thinking it's maybe an application in search of a, of a, a <laughs> sorry, an idea in search of an application. Sorry. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but certainly, if you look in in uh, 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 the way things have gone in hydrocarbons, and there's a lot of 4D, you know, 4D seismic imaging and stuff like that going yeah. on.